Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Flax Engine. Now Flax Engine I've covered a number of times in the past on the channel. First one, it was first in beta really early on, then with each of the subsequent major releases. And we have another major release today. Flax Engine 1.3 was just released yesterday and there's quite a bit in this particular update. Every point something release in Flax Engine is a pretty significant one. So I'm going to start things with a bit of a hands-on demonstration. Here you can see uh, 3D models added into a scene. I created all this from scratch using uh, the Polygon Cinti bundle out there right now, by the way. Cinti graphics are great if you're interested in that. It's currently on Humble. I will uh, share that later on and the link is down below. But all these assets were instanced in the scene. Uh, you can see the world pretty easy. And you got typical manipulation like so. Again, I can do an F to frame around the selected object. As you can see here, our performance is quite nice in the editor. We got things like uh, you see on the space station itself, uh, we have emissive light sources. You can see the effects of the camera on the various different lighting environment. We have an environmental cube map available here and so on. Now there is a lot of functionality in Flax. For example, what programming languages do you use to code in Flax? Well, you've got a couple of different options. Immediately, uh, right in the editor itself, you've got this visual scripting language. If you're familiar with, uh, say, blueprints, it's sort of like blueprints light. We can come down in here uh, and we could do, say, on update. You see you got a number of different methods. So I'm going to override the on update uh, method right here. Say we wanted to pass a parameter in over here. We could do so. We could pick any kind of object we want in the world. So let's say um, actor. So we can add actor in here. And then we can pick the, the actual actor we want to work on. So let's pass you in our ship, for example. And now we can take that guy. We can instance that in the scene. Uh, and then we can drag off pins from that. And then you can call all the various different functions that are available for it. So, for example, uh, get location, local position, drag that off. And then your flow goes. Uh, so let's say we take our local position and we'll do a transform. So we can do a... Uh, uh, Translate 2D. I know that potentially doesn't make any sense, but we'll drag this pin off and so on. So that is how the visual scripting side of things work. Uh, and that's not an actual valid script. I'm just kind of showcasing the functionality that's available there. But if you're also interested, you can also code in both C++ and C Sharp. And with the C++, you get live support. So here is my project that I've created, kind of a uh, random garble. Over here, you're going to see we have um, source available for a scene in our game. You're going to see here we have a number of different uh, classes available. So here, for example, free camera. Camera. This is a C Sharp script that controls camera movement. Uh, you can have it open up in uh, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio itself, and so on. I think it's yeah, it's set to use Visual Studio for now. As you'll see, you coming here. It, it creates a project for you, all your various different classes. So this one, for example, is inherited from the base class of script. Um, and you've got the ability to, so here we can expose out properties over to uh, the Flux engine itself using uh, attributes and so on. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're basically overriding a series of functions. If you've used Unity, you know what's going on here. You can also do the same thing in C++ if you so wish to do so. So that is definitely nice. All of this, by the way, is documented, although that is probably one of the areas of weakness when it comes to Flax. There is definitely documentation for everything, but getting up and going on the coding side of things is probably the least documented aspect of um, uh, of the Flax engine, I would say, at this point in time. And in terms of uh, working with 3D models, that's super simple here. So, for example, I've brought in a number of spacecraft from uh, that particular uh, bundle from Cinti earlier on. But here, I'll showcase the process. So, I downloaded one of the uh, this, the space um, sci-fi space bundle. I'm going to go on in here, go to static meshes. I'll pick uh, a ship or, or whatever to bring in. So, let's do another ship. So, uh, SM prop. Uh, not vehicle part, ship. I think it was ship. Yep, yeah, ship. All right, so here's the space station. Here's the fighter. We'll bring in a new fighter. Actually, I don't have a carrier. I'll bring in a lactic character. So basically, grab the FBX file you wish. Go over here, drop it into your scene. Now, one thing you're going to probably want to do is set the scale to 0.01 .01 if you're using the Cinti bundle, uh, just because they're scaled up for uh, 100 times over. That's a pretty standard thing between like FBX and... Um, uh, sorry, between Blender and Maya and Max and all those, it's either uh, 0 0.01 scaling or 100 scaling. They just are, are of different scopes. Uh, did I screw something up? I don't think so. Let me try that again. Bop, bop, drop that in, import. The joy of live demos. <sighs> all right. Am I running into an error? There might be an error with that particular import. So let me just make sure that it's not just that scale. Oh, it's because I'd already imported it. Sorry, that was a, 
I was an existing asset. I'd actually already brought one in. My bad. All right, there we go. So we brought in the new one right here. At the same time, you can go about creating uh, new materials. So um, I've actually already created one over here. So the synthing material is available right here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you that process. So you've got a full visual uh, framework for creating uh, uh, basic materials as well so you can see we're bringing a texture into the uh, color slot here we got a texture for the mask slot here and we've got uh, an emissive texture available here as well you can go ahead and add a, a number of new things you can do uh, logic on your textures make things somewhat dynamic you can do uh, particle uh, properties over time and so on so you got a lot of control over the particular material attributes of something and then finally let's go back to our craft we imported so you can open this guy up you can see here after the import you've got control over things such as uh, the uvs the the materials applied so there's no material applied here i can go back here to my content grab my material i've already defined drop it in there and there you see uh, in your preview of the object being updated and done now we go ahead and bring that guy into our world uh so where did you go oh, yeah you're under craft all right, so there we go. There's our spaceship. Instantiate it in the world. Move it around with the widgets and so on and so forth. So, so we can obviously do uh, scale rotation and so on for placing things in the scene. Very simple process uh, to work with there. Uh, we want to create a new scene, for example. So let's do so file, uh, save scene, file. Okay, so go down here, content, create new, oops, new scene. Sure, scene zero. All right, here we go. Oh, I already have a scene zero. Okay, that was confusing. Uh, what did I call? I thought I called you scene zero. Okay, here, I'll do a new one. New scene YouTube demo. All right, so open our new scene up so you can see the world. Pretty straightforward how things work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add an entity to the world. So you can see here, new, and you got a number of different out of the box things, such as like actor, uh, 3D models, and so on. Those are automatically instantiated when you drag something into the scene like we did earlier on. Or what I could do is go ahead and say, okay, new, um, rigid body. All right, so the rigid body, we're going to add a new physics sphere collider and new, uh, where are you? So visuals. I thought it was a visual. Hmm. All right, I'll do it this way. So over here, base models, sphere, and we'll drop one in the scene right there. So we got a sphere, rigid body controlled. So our rigid body is available right here. We'll grab this guy right there. We'll move it up in the world like so and play. And there you see physics in the world. Now, I'd obviously, I'd have to create uh, a collider for this object right here so that it would go ahead and hit it. Pretty straightforward on the whole, though. And I have to get at least a straightforward on the whole in uh, at least once per video. And then if you want to go ahead and apply one of your scripts, so you've got your game logic over here. So game, um, none of these make any sense. Okay, ship builder. I don't know what that ship actually does, but we're going to have rigid body selected like so. And you can apply your script right there. And if your script has parameters available, uh, you can define them uh, and set those properties easily enough. So for example, I come back here, I created a visual script. Uh, I think it was this guy. No, that's my scene. Where's my script? Uh, my script or my crypt. All right, there we go. Nope, that's not the one. Which one did I create? One of these has a parameter. There we go. So you see, we pass it in, and then you have ability to access the parameters and pass those parameters in as well. So uh, that is kind of the very basics of working with Flax Engine. It's a really interesting project on the whole. As you can see here, you've got things like terrain support, uh, support for <coughs> Um You've got uh, the ability to paint various different things in the scenes. You've got, uh, again, rudimentary physics. Well, not rudimentary, but I showed you a rudimentary demo of the physics properties that are available in here. You've got things like animated meshes with full animation uh, tree support, by the way. Um, socketing things together, spline control. You've got a, a 2D UI layer in there as well. Uh, you've got control over the various different lighting features. For example, if I go ahead, so skylight, you can see here you got all the various different uh, properties for it. So it's volumetric fog, the brightness and so on. Uh, ditto for our camera. Our camera has a number of controls. So you can set the field of view. Uh, perspective near plane, far plane. Uh, you can set up and control uh, render masks and so on. You can pin it in place so that it is always available there. So you can see the current camera active or unpin it if you so wish to do so. You've got control over the environment probes, fogs, pulse, uh, 
Pro uh, VFX volumes available right here. Again, you got all of the various different sets that so you can do things like ambient occlusion, bloom, tone mapping, so on and so forth. There is a ton of functionality in Flax Editor, and now we're going to focus on what is new in Flax 1.3. So here we are over at the Flax site. Number one new feature is Mac OS support for both the engine and the editor. That is definitely very nice. So if you're running Mac OS 10, 14 or higher, um, it is available. Uh, we just started support though, so there may be some bugs. Uh, I do not know if this is universal support or if it's using Rosetta for um, M1 based Macs. So I'm gonna need to try it out myself. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, nothing mentioned here, but again, it's early on and there are a few known issues, which is why I didn't demonstrate with the Mac version. Uh, but it's definitely a nice step forward for Mac users. Uh, we also have Ragdoll support. Um, used to generate procedural death animations of characters or to simulate parts of skeletons that should behave more procedurally. Uh, this update contains runtime support for simulating large amounts of, of ragdolls and inbuilt tools for the editor to quickly generate ragdolls for characters. Editor now has a ragdoll generator and editing tools. Ragdolls can be used in prefabs for character generation. Uh, we got improvements to the animation. Um, we've added animation slots, animation event tracks, and instance scene animations. You got, uh, again, a, a visual language for controlling animation graphs, uh, and they've added animation slots into those graphs. Animation events can be added, so you can do things like play VFX when certain things happen in an animation, as you can see here, such as um, spawning foot decals in the snow as you walk uh, through the scene. Uh, C++ API got improved. The CPI API docs are now live, full engine and editor API reference and so on. So there is good reference material. What I'd like to see is more like onboarding uh, scripting tutorials. That's what I was talking about early on, by the way. Uh, API interface is now fully supported in C Sharp and Visual Script. It allows you to declare an interface in C++ and use it in-game uh, scripting for greater extensibility of this code. So what essentially that allows you to do is write portions of your code using C++ and expose them to both um, C Sharp and the visual scripting. Uh, scripting Enum is a new small utility for C++ scripting to easily convert enums to strings and back again. Uh, Lambda improvements, visual scripting got some improvements. You can use arrays in visual scripting. Change parameter type and graph execution performance has been greatly improved. Uh, Flex system gets UI navigation to perform focus navigation around the user interface with input actions such as keyboard arrows or gamepad keys. Features essential for console games or other gamepad support. So uh, it allows you to basically navigate you, the UI you created using uh, common defined controls, so such as, again, arrows and, and gamepad movement and so on. Uh, another new feature, the 1.3 update is online platform support. Uh, not notable step towards making your game more connected with online services in the engine. We've added a new iOnline platform interface designed for online platform providers for communicating with various multiplayer services, such as player info, achievements, game lobbies, and so on. Um, each online platform influences this interface is provided via plugin that can be used for your game projects, Steam, Xbox Live, and platform specific for registered developers. Um, multiple physics scenes. Um, you can create multiple physics scenes and simulate them separately. Uh, editor tool improvements. Uh, debug view is in there. Visual Studio 2022 support, uh, which is nice. Timeline and curve editor improvements. Uh, number of platform specific updates and so on. So that is Flex Engine 1.3, a pretty good amount of stuff in there. So if you're interested in checking it out, it is available at flaxengine.com. Uh, in terms of the, the features and functionality of Flax, why would you use Flax over another game engine per se? Well, the list is here. I've gone through it in previous um, videos. I'm not gonna jump into it too much, but if you're interested, some of the highlight features are here because that comes up every single time we have an engine like this is, why wouldn't I just use Unity or why wouldn't I just use Unreal Engine? Well, according to Flax, these are the key things there. Uh, it's it's a hard argument to make because Unity and Unreal and then we got Godot as an open source option are just becoming so ubiquitous that why would you use another engine? Well, sometimes you just like the way another engine works better. Uh, in terms of the costs involved, um, you can use Flax for free. It's 4% when you release after you make 25K per quarter. So if you make $25,000 in the first three months of the year, for example, you have to pay them 4% of that amount. Uh, above that amount. So if you made, I'd uh, say $50,000, you would have to pay 4% uh, of $25,000 after that first quarter. Uh, very reasonable uh, pricing structure. It's cheaper than uh, Unreal Engine, which I believe is still 6%. And then Unity uses a per seat license, a bit of a different approach. Uh, by the way, all of the source is available. Uh, so this isn't an open source engine per se, uh, but it is a source available engine. So it's available up on GitHub. I will link this with the linked article down below. If you're curious about the license, uh, it is available over there. 
uh, those are the terms of using it. There were some weird clauses, but over time they've they've tweaked it a little bit. If you're wondering about what language Flax is written in, it's about half C++, half C Sharp, and then a mix of shaders and so on are available in there as well. If you want to jump in here and check out the source code, uh, you can do so. It is updated quite consistently at the source level, but we don't get these 1.x releases. I think 1.2 was... Oh, what, eight or nine months ago. Um, so if you want to stay latest and greatest, you're going to probably want to go ahead with the um, the source builds. And they're basically updated on a daily basis if you're interested in going that approach. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier on, all the assets I used in this demo came from uh, the current Best of Polygon pack, which got about a week left going on. A really cool pack. Uh, and it's engine agnostic. As you saw, we're, we're using this in the Flats engine uh, using their... Um, uh, what do they call the source versions of it, but they also come with Unity and Unreal Engine versions as well. And what we used in this one is the Sci-Fi Kit, which, that, that one right here. Uh, this is the pack that we used in action right here. This is a great bundle. I will have this link down below if you are interested. But anyways, that there is Flax 1.3, available at, again, flaxengine.com. A uh, pretty significant release, especially if you are a Mac OS user, because, hey, it works for you now. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely uh, one of those engines I'm keeping my eyes on. Uh, I find it, you know, the occasional bug in the editor, but considering this is primary a single developer working on this one, primarily, uh, that is impressive. There's a decent community forming around it. There's a lot of interest in Flax, and it's one that I am certainly keeping my eye on. Have you checked out Flax? If so, what did you think of it? If not, are you interested in checking it out going forward? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.